This MLB and college baseball edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Shady Rays. SGPN is teaming up with Shady Rays for Shady May. Get 50% off your Shady Rays using promo code SGPN and then go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash shady for your chance to win $500. We're also brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, sir. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner and picks Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. In honor of the uh, being the eve of the return of Colombian Colby. Oh, Cartel Colby. Cartel Colby. Well, hopefully he got through. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. Could be it. customs Colby. But, we but gotta. In honor of that, we are here to talk baseball. But hut hut hike. <laughs> Of course, football meant to be played on baseball fields. Yes, Colby. according to Colby. Uh, take us out to the ball game. We got a USFL picks podcast coming up. We're going to be doing uh, another NFL futures episode. We've been doing uh, a ton, all getting you ready for preseason, of uh, best ball drafts. We got that covered. Literally doing it all. But hey, we got a little downtime here. Perfect time to hit in, uh, talk a little MLB and college baseball. For so. the record, I don't have downtime, but I am squeezing it in. I have been watching a lot of practice <laughs> footage from OTAs. Oh, Ryan is really <laughs> excited. Uh, there was some uh, chirping going on in social media oh. between myself and Ryan. We've agreed on a mustache <laughs> bet. I, and just make sure if, if I'm getting this right, Ryan. So the Dallas Goddard uh, laid it out pretty obviously. Dallas Goddard versus Darren Waller. Yes. Whoever has the most fantasy points, half point PBR. Oh, we're not. We we're doing all these underdog drafts. Yeah, we'll I keep it underdog keep formatting. Whoever has the uh, the most points at the end of the 2023 yes. season wins. The loser yep. has to rock a mustache again. Both of us have full beards. Shave it down to a mustache. Yep. I'm, I have kids and I am around children <laughs> often, both high schools and middle schools. This uh, is <laughs> yeah. So you have to go down to a mustache. One point. Yeah. For every uh, one day for one, every point, one day for every point. So, I mean, nightmare scenario is <laughs> uh, one of the guys gets a season-ending injury early on. We'll see, Ryan. I feel confident we, we in Dallas to, Goddard. We, we have uh, to he's got a chip on his shoulder. Could be a breakout year for Goddard. We have to negotiate two things. One, uh, if we want to include any sort of injury clauses, preseason, any sort of injury clause, I'm fine leaving that out. Two, when when does the wearing of the mustache start? I think it starts starts in the playoffs. It's a regular season award. Regular season award starts in the playoffs. Good thing to kick off the the playoffs. Yeah. (laughs) Good thing to kick off our playoff uh, podcast. Uh, Thank God week eighteen happens. I think like all good player props, he has to both guys have to take a snap uh in the season for it to count. Yeah, that seems fair. For there to be action. Uh and I'm a snap or a recorded stat. I'm just kidding. Relax. All right, uh, we'll go with snap. All right, we got a lot to get to. We're going to be joined by the MLB guys, uh, doing a segment with them. Uh, you know, little uh, little future check in, little tout in there. Just, just kind of some broad strokes in the MLB, and then we'll be joined by uh, Noah, who heads up the uh, college baseball experience over on the uh, yeah the, over on the college experience. If we were to run back the year 2020, I think you'd have to wear it for 130 days. The the mustache. Wait, D- what? I, I if twenty if the twenty twenty you the nightmare scenario for you is the twenty twenty season happens all over again, and Darren Waller outscores <laughs> Dallas Goddard by one hundred thirty <laughs> points, and you're wear you're wearing a mustache until fucking. Memorial I mean, Day. Dallas Goddard had a decent season in twenty twenty. He had forty six catches, three touchdowns. Like it wasn't. I mean, this was when Zach Ertz was still in his prime, Ryan. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm I'm just saying things that ha- you like to talk about things that have happened in the past. So just yeah, bring I'm, it up. All I'm right. more of a windshield guy, not a uh, rear. Moving rear along, I I do think <laughs> I have been thinking about this, and and uh, my my dad wore a mustache for a long time, 
So I do think that the down. I mean, I think the odds are right because I think you're going to look funnier with a mustache. Mm. We've seen we've seen it come out for uh, for cop rolls before. Yeah, I can I can rock a mustache. We'll get this figured out. All right, Ryan. <laughs> If if needed, again, I feel confident in my if position. Needed. The, the mustache bet will give us a uh, just a little extra we sweat need, here. We need Jake to. We need some <laughs> photoshops of us of us rocking oh, yeah. mustaches. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, shout out to Jake, actually in the <laughs> chat. Hashtag hashtag Dejans only. Uh, he wants to know Canarius, Tony, Acres, or Pickens in best ball. Wow. Okay, this is a baseball episode, Jake. But you, come on, we're Jake. always on the clock when it comes to uh, the oh. National Football League. What do you do here, Kramer? I'm getting. I'm. I'm talking myself more and more into Cam Akers. Okay. So I'll say Cam. Yeah. Akers. I mean, they, they, I would say uh, I like George Pickens, man, and we'll get to it in the Offensive Player of the Year. I, I think anytime you can get that second year receiver who has a chance to really make a big leap. Like he just passed the eye test for me in a big way. I do, and Kadarius Tony again. They're talking about him being the number one receiver. Full I know fit. it's half point. Hundred percent. I know. I know. Kramer's a little too close to the situation, uh, but also, to, so I would actually go Pickens, Tony, Acres at the end, just because I do think I like his situation. I don't mind having Acres some shares of Acres, so I'm not completely out on him. But I do think. They drafted a running back late. I, I do think there's still some sort of rift between McVay and Acres, and it's not it's not the Miles Sanders Carolina Panthers situation where I think he's clearly the guy. All right, we'll see. Ryan, uh, before we get to the baseball talk, time for this week's edition of Real Men of Degens. SGPN presents. Real men of DGENs. Real men of DGENs. We salute you. Allegedly, Sean Payton. That's right. There's a video circling around. Shout out to Scott Reichel who brought it to uh, to our radar on last night's episode. There's a video of a guy who looks and sounds like Sean Payton clearing a massive bong, hanging out with what looks to be his kids. It is a legendary clip for a legendary head coach. So hats off to you. You might not be dangerous, but Hey, marijuana is legal in your state. You're enjoying sitting back, relaxing, Woo, it's smoking my weed. taking the edge off before the season. Russ is out on this. He doesn't like the drugs. <laughs> this isn't cool. By the way, you know, that kid recorded it. Oh, these yeah. fucking kids record everything. Ryan, fire up the video. I mean, talk about uh, the get, audio is still pretty good, good, but youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast for the video. Keep going. Keep going. You're, you're the man. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I just the 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 again. He did not dominate the ball and kind of kind of just was not a, an amazing pull. But I just love his kid in like a tie dye shirt, just going, "Yeah, you're the man. Couple yeah, the, you are." He, he didn't know how to operate the the gun. Completely so, close. Um, yeah, similar to John Moran, just doesn't know how to operate the the machinery. But I. I I do think uh, a this is definitely him with his kids, right? Like, or at least uh, that has to be his kids or some sort of relative. Yeah, I right? would say kid, and then I'm gonna play one. More and then this is the kid's friend who's filming him. Oh, you know what? I'm looking at this again. That was fairly creamy bong head for Sean Payton. So maybe uh, I, he didn't do a so? great job of clearing it. But I, I, the audio made me think he wasn't Did pulling he hard enough. That look, look at the chamber closely, Ryan. That thing looks right, pretty. I'm gonna full. fire it up again. <laughs> Pull it out when you're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep you're, going. You're the man. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you're the man. Uh, yeah, you are. I guess we didn't. The video cuts off before we would see the the, the coughing. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, th this is what the best part about this whole thing <laughs> is. Go back and watch the moment where Scott tells us about it on on the NBA show last night. I, I've never seen him gr like kind of smirk. Like he looks like my daughter trying to keep in a secret. Like oh, he's just yeah. like Ooh. he brought us a great present. It was awesome. Ah, I mean, so this, are we more? Are we in, further in or further out on the Broncos based on that? I think uh, again, good way to take the edge off in the off season. Good way to deal with the stress. Yeah. I'm of... not anti weed, but this does make me wonder his motivations <laughs> for moving to Colorado. Easy saying. Retirement that's a, that's a rookie bong hit for sure. Yeah, you know, he's, it's the off season. 
Well, I mean, what I wanted to see was that after guys, that guys after are- cough of like him like keeled <laughs> over. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you're an amateur taking a massive uh, bong hit, it's gonna be uh, lights out. Does Russ have a conversation with Coach <laughs> after this? Uh, coach, you know, I'm all about cooking, but don't be cooking up uh, those bong rips. That's bad for you. All right, Dr- let's Dr- ride. Dr- the apology includes him saying that he flew Drew Brees out to give him a, a talk on how to oh, be a better, wow. better human. You can do whatever right. you want. All right, hey, let's get to the baseball before we do. Shout out to Edge Boost. That's right. Love me some Edge Boost. Again, if you have not signed up for Edge Boost, you're missing out. It's the world's first uh bet now pay later Visa card. Again, similar to other, you know, buy now, pay later. It basically allows you to split up the payments so you can increase your bet. Uh highly recommend Edge Boost. Again, 0% interest and pay back the advance over four equal weekly installments. So 0% interest. Great deal there. Uh, again, deposit uh, the funds into your account. Edge Boost will match the deposit. You can use 2x the funds on any legal betting sports site. Edge currently offers up to $2,500 advances. Up to $2,500 you can add to your bank roll. My Edge Boost double down play of the day is going back to the well. I know they let game four slip through their hands there. I'm going to take the Miami Heat plus eight. I mean, that is crazy. Dog. Good hedge here uh, for uh, Miami Heat over five and a half, and Miami Heat in six, which I'm still sweating out here, hoping that hit. I would have obviously been happy to cash Miami Heat series uh, with them getting a win, but I still think eight points in Boston, considering how well they played up there and how bad Boston has played at home, I think is a uh, is a great price. So. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to sign up today. Uh, get your own edge double boost or sorry, edge boost double down play. Uh sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge. Again, zero percent interest. Must be 21 years or older to use. Only valid in legal gambling states. Problem gambling, call one 800 gambler Joining us on the line, the dynamic duo from the MLB Gambling Podcast. First up, you know him, you love him. Five tool player here at SGPN on all the pods. Mr. Moonoff, the machine. Manji, what's happening, Moonoff? Oh, nothing. Another day in paradise. You guys must be bored if you really want to talk baseball in the middle <laughs> of the week. Uh, but yeah, MLB season chugging along. Uh, we're having some success over there. So if you haven't tapped in with us, come join us on the MLB pod. Yeah, MLB pod uh, picking up a ton of scene. Of course, congrats. Uh, also, you know, congratulating you uh, on air. You're a proud new dad. Uh, how is how is having a son? Has it impacted the mojo positive, negatively? Do we have any uh, trends yet tied to your uh, baby? So when we were in the hospital the first two nights, we we started off three and zero. So I asked them, hey, I was all NBA playoffs. So I asked them, you know, and he kind of gave me a. Eh. So I, I bet those teams and those totals. Three and zero, but ever since we got home, we're zero and three. So um, maybe, maybe need to. Moon off will be like uh, driving around in circles around the hospital, trying to recapture, <laughs> recapture that magic. Small sample size. Moon. Small sample. Yeah, size. very small sample. But yeah, uh, no, it's been good. Joining us as well from the MLB Gambling Podcast, the premier a league gambling podcast as well, Mister Malcolm Bamford. What's happening, Malcolm? Hello, gents. How we doing? I am very well. Me and Moonaf have got a new dynamic now that he's had the baby because he will reply to my messages when he's feeding the baby at like three o'clock in the morning, which yeah. he never used to do. So um, I'll send him a message and then he freaks me out by replying. I think, what are you doing? Up? And then I remember. So yeah, that's added a new thing now. So yeah, we get midnight Moonaf to uh, to have a chat with as well. Yeah, I, I will say just in gen, this is more of just a general macro life statement. But as you get older. At least for me, I found that some of my most efficient hours are like between one thirty and three thirty a.m. So, <laughs> well, welcome to the club, Moon. Ryan's a Ryan the maniac. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, we thought it'd be fun to have you guys on. Obviously, MLP Gambling Podcast is your place to be for the daily picks episodes, getting you ready for the next day's action. But uh, perfect time to kind of do a little uh, for the casuals, baseball casuals like Kramer and myself here. What, what? Check in. Check in with the uh, check in with the league. Uh, we gave out a ton. Wait, of did a- you accidentally lock MLB Sean in the closet with <laughs> NBA Sean? Uh, we wow. gave out a, we gave out a ton of bets uh, future wise. 
some looking better than others. I was doing a little uh, low pass of some of the stuff I gave <laughs> a out. Low pass. Uh, what are you a crop duster? <laughs> my AOS uh, Oakland Athletics to win the division 250, <laughs> 250 to one. It has not looked good. They're down to five hundred to one. Still a lot of time. They're literally enabling like waves of young people to be like <laughs> betting on baseball is easy. You just bet against the <laughs> athletics. It really is. Uh, it's been a nice trend. What one a uh, uh, one of my uh, couple touts. And again, knock on wood, I don't jinx anything. But my Baltimore Orioles, I locked them up oh. over seventy six and a half and twenty five to one to win the division. They're now down to. Uh, I mean, they're only oh. a couple games back. They are disgusting. Uh, now they're plus eight fifty, so it's chipping away. But again, my my coup de gras was Justin <laughs> Steele, uh, NL Cy Young at two hundred to one. Mostly because he's a listener of the show. Yeah, shout out Justin if you're listening. Two hundred to one. Now he's all the way down to twenty five to oh. one. So Do stoked we sell on that ticket? future. Yeah, <laughs> Justin, reach out. Should we sell the ticket? Yeah, let us know. <laughs> are you gonna have a collapse, and will your arm fall off? There, Cubs are off to. Uh, a decent start there. Uh, again, my Cubs Phillies uh, World Series prediction not looking great because the Phillies have kind of looked like shit, especially post Bryce Harper. I don't know how you get Bryce Harper back uh, and you've somehow gotten worse. But um, yeah, and and even our uh, I know myself, Malcolm and Moonoff all kind of like the oh. Diamondbacks as a long shot at forty to one. Uh, as far as how things have gone so far, they're uh, all the way down to nine to one. So again. A long way to go, but at least at least we've eaten up some value. What are you looking at, Moonoff, uh, as far as futures? How have you feel like uh, you've been you've been doing overall here? Yeah, I think it's not off to a bad start. I know um, we were all really high on the um, like you mentioned the Diamondbacks coming in, and really it's been Zach Gallon. We'll talk about Cy Young in a minute here, but. Um, they look pretty good. I also did take them to make the playoffs. I know they have to compete in a division with the Dodgers and the Giants, or sorry, with the Padres. But Padres' offense has just been sputtering. I don't know what's going on, especially with, with the type of hitters that they do have. But for the Diamondbacks at this juncture of the season, 48 games in, they're only one and a half games out of that NL West division lead. I know the Angels, or sorry, the Dodgers have caught a little bit of fire here. But I mean, I think this Diamondbacks team is going to stay competitive if they're able to stay this way when we get to the trade deadline. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up another arm uh, behind Zach Gallon and um, Merrill Kelly there uh, for them to give my extra boost to get to the playoffs. So I feel really good about that one. And real um, quick, just just not to get off the Diamondbacks, because Sean did something yeah. very clever here. He made he made he made a point to say that Malcolm Munoff and himself agreed. When in reality, Malcolm Munoff and myself gave out the Arizona over. We also had a long conversation on the show, if you remember. Sean I don't was remember. Probably playing blackjack about the <laughs> how strong, how nice that make the playoffs prop was going to be for us. So uh, yeah. again, Sean really a, on a full day of pulling well, out come on. these I, bullshit, I, slippery, I, mud slinging <laughs> tactics. <laughs> Unbelievable! I, I but, looked at the division first winner fa- first over facts. I I looked at the division winner. You had the Padres listed. Yeah. I did forget that you had yeah. Arizona. Uh, locked up along with Malcolm and Munoff at over 74 and a half. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. Uh, what about you, Mal? Uh, we gave out a bunch of futures. What's your, what's your kind of best one so far that you're, you're, you're patting yourself on the back and which one are you kind of way off on? But my two, my world series predictions um, kind of just demonstrate what baseball will do to you because <laughs> I gave out the Tampa Bay Rays at 22 to one. Um, and they were up. They've been outstanding. Um, they've gone off like they've been shot out of a cannon to start the season, breaking all kinds of records. Um, so yeah, a little spring in my step, smelling myself. The um, the the National League team I gave out with the St. Louis Cardinals, who've been oh, absolute man. dog shit. <laughs> yeah. So like, opposite, you know what I mean? Yeah. It gives with one hand and it takes away with the other. This if that's if we had that conversation last week. Actually, the Cardinals are just starting to put it together a little bit, so I feel a little bit better. But um, similar to yourself, Sean, a lot of my um, National League awards picks are looking in great form. And Ronald Acuna, I gave out at nine to one for MVP, is in to plus one fifty. Mm. Uh, Spencer Strider, I gave out at eleven to one, is in to plus two ten. And I've got my own hundred to one shot, which is Brett Beatty for Rookie of the Year. Gave him out at hundred to one. He's now ten to one third favorite. So yeah, got some li- got some live dogs going. Let's go. That's what I like to hear. Dog. 
And it, I mean, honestly, like just our our overall performance as a team. Yes. With our World Series predictions, Mal and myself <laughs> both with the Cardinals in there. Sean, of course, famously picked the Phillies and uh, the Cubs. I, I'm seeing uh, Phillies versus uh, the Twins here. What you got? Moon, Moonoff is rocking the. Uh, la- are they last place? Toronto Blue Jays. So. <laughs> we're all, um, we're, I think the Red Sox have that crown, but yeah. let me see. Actually, no, no they are last place. Yeah, it's the Blue Jays. Hey, yeah, hey Blue Jays. The, the Twins, who I pivoted off of once I realized <laughs> the Cubs uh, could not win. Uh, I had Phillies twins and twins are uh, leading the AL central. That, that division seems kind of crazy. I mean, everyone is bad in the AL central with the exception of the twins or uh-huh. twins are only two games over my, 500 and they, they have a, uh, what is it? Two and a half game lead. My guardians pick is and they're not, they're not out of it yet. No, they're me. not out of it <laughs> at all. I mean, again, they are three and a half games back from the division. Everyone's under 500 in the AL central, except the twins. I'll be honest. Feeling a little bit like I should have just pulled my like just standard Brooks Kepka style <laughs> handicapping for this little baseball chalky. bullshit. Yeah, I got in here, got <laughs> cute, and look where it got me. I'm looking like an asshole. What if, Munaf, if you had a big uh pick biggest surprise team right now, who would you oh. who would you say? Oh man. Um I think for me, just because I did take the Rays under, has <laughs> been the Rays at 35 and 14. I mean they're, they're a machine. Yeah, they. Well, I think they won what their first nine, ten games uh, in a row to start the season. The pitching has been really good. They're twenty-two and four at home so far this season. Uh, I'm also been surprised. I know I took the Orioles over, but I didn't think they would have this much success early on. I mean, they've been very consistent. You take a look at their home and road splits: yeah. fifteen and eight at home, sixteen and eight at home. Um, and so that's another team, the two AL East teams, and then I think the other one for me, the Texas Rangers. I thought their off their uh, pitching rotation would not be that good, but right now they're sitting in first place in the AL West, just a game above the Houston Astros, um, and they've been pleasantly uh, surprising. Their offense has, I believe, they have scored the most runs, if I'm not mistaken. So that yep. offense has been chugging along for the Texas Rangers. So those are the three teams that I was really kind of, especially in the American uh, American League. Run differential: first place, Tampa Bay Rays, one twenty six. Second place, Texas Rangers, one oh six. That's crazy. Third place is all the way down with the Atlanta Braves at sixty one. So they're just way in a different just, class. Yeah, dying. another fun yep. uh, run differential nugget in the American League. No teams have a negative run di- differential in the AL East. One team has a run differential that's negative in the West, and it's the Athletics, and it's by a mile, <laughs> minus one seventy seven. And then four out of minus the five, one seventy seven. Then four out of the five teams in the Central have negative run differential. Well, so. you, you mentioned the NL Central, Ryan. Perfect uh, transition. The Pirates right now tied for first. Oh. They were thirty. They're trying to, to lose. I know they this were. This is like the movie Major League in real life. <laughs> they were thirty to one <laughs> to win the division, and now they're they're tied for first. Uh, Mal, what do you make of the uh, NL Central here? Obviously, the Cardinals be, are being the huge disappointment at twenty-one and twenty-eight, but yeah, it seems like uh, still fairly wide open here. Just briefly going back to Kramer's point there. If you look, if you open the standings page, um, the AL East goes into the AL Central, and they all stay in order. It's like a division of ten <laughs> because Toronto is yeah. fifth in the AL East, but their record's still better than Minnesota. Who were top of the AL Central, That's so they hilarious. just go down from one to ten. It's preposterous. Um, <laughs> but that, yeah, the, the NL Central division. Um, ah, Pittsburgh have been loads of fun. Uh, they've got a lot of young players. They're quite easy to root for. It's a nice looking ballpark when you watch them, but they're easy when you put them on the telly. And yeah, it's a bit like two ball men arguing over a cone. This division, isn't it? No one really wants it. Um, <laughs> And Mark your bingo you've got to think, you, <laughs> bingo. You've got to think St. Louis have got a chance because what well, they five games back, and that's nothing. Honestly, we could talk about this next Tuesday, and they could be tied for the lead in that division. And they've got previous. So I think what three years running now, Moonaf, we've sat and sort of handicapped them at the All Star break, and they've been yeah. plus money every time, and they've won it comfortably yeah. every time. So. Um, what plus two seventy? The only they haven't got much pitching, um, but they might get some uh, injured players back. They might even trade, but the the the, S, the starting pitching's been poor. Um, but there's just nothing. Pittsburgh are going to fall in a little hole. I don't like the Cubs particularly, and the Brewers are a little bit anemic. So it really it's a lack of opposition that makes you want to back the Cardinals more than anything else. Uh, or will the Pirates still be sellers at the deadline if they're in first place? Yes. 
Oh my god! <laughs> poor Pirates fans. They just can't catch a break. And by the way, that that's that's what you get when you have a a, a man from across the pond talking about mm. American baseball. Is talking about how beautiful the park is. Yes, and how how good it looks on the telly. Yeah. Love it. Uh, all right, let's give out some picks here, Kramer. What do we want to do? Do we want to do our favorite uh, division bet for the AL, NL, and then and then Cy Young? Why? We'll kick things off here with Moon off. Because some of these divisions may be a little bit more interesting betting wise than others. Uh, who do you like in the AL right now if you had to get down on a uh, on a division price? If you're getting back in on the market, what are you looking at? Mm, yeah, for the AL, and let me actually pull up the well, and something here. that while while off's thinking, something that does stand out, for example, the, that Rangers team we just talked about with the impressive amount of runs and and just they've been playing lights out ball. They're plus 300 in that division. The Astros, who by the way have won eight straight, they're still minus 165. So that that kind of stands out in terms of where we are now to what Moon or to what Malcolm was saying earlier about how it's way too early and there's probably still value on some of these teams we fancied early in the season as it Sean, it has it's not even technically summer. This is a summer sport. We're not yeah. even in the summer yet. Not so. even Memorial Day. I mean the Astros Can, can I make a suggestion? At minus 165 is interesting. Why aren't we doing our MLB preview now? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I guess technically you have to do it. Uh, I mean there are 100 games left, so Yeah, we have plenty of games left <laughs> and the the we still have things to pick. All right, Muna. AL team to to win the division. I got to go with the guardians. I'm going to stick with my gut from the mm, beginning of the season. Yeah. I mean, for you to get plus three thirty right now with them only being three and a half games out. Yep. Um, I think that division is going to be wide open. I think the tigers will fall off as well. Um, and the guardians pitching. I, I, again, I do think that they may make some moves come to come trade deadline, whether that's both on offense and defense and they're just well managed, right? Terry Francona has done a fantastic job with this team. So at plus three thirty for a team, that's only three and a half games out in that AL central division. Um, I like the guardians as my AL, uh, AL uh, team for the division. Great point. Uh, also the team I was going to throw out managed by someone who once coached Michael Jordan. So uh, Jimmy mm -hmm. Butler showing what it's yeah. like to be close to. So you're also Michael. on the guardians here. Craig. Oh, uh, they were my world series pick. Why would I go anywhere else? I like, I like the logic. Yeah. Double up on the guardians. What about you? Uh, Mal, what do you like here in the AL hopping in now? If you had to get down on one of these uh, division prices, which what do you fancy? Um, it's the AL West, and I like the Seattle Mariners, um, oh, okay. who are fourth on uh, in the standings at the moment. There's just a couple of things for me. A, their pitching metrics are all kind of top eight around the league, um, and they've carried a little bit of bad fortune. So um, they are 23 and 24. They've got an expected win loss record of 26 and 21. So, with average look, that would put them three games back. And their record in one run games is four and 12. Oh. I mean, that's a big old swing. Like, do you know I what know. I mean? It's, you're talking yeah. very, very fine margins. Um, so, if that even just balances itself out, it doesn't have to swing the other way. If that gets somewhere back to normal, uh, they're going to be live. That division is incredibly tight because you've got Texas, Houston, and the Angels who are all competitive. So you're not going to be able to put a cigarette paper between them at the end. So what? Um, I think I handicapped this last Friday with Noah in Seattle. We're about six to one. I think they've drifted a couple of points. I think I can get around about eight to one. Now. I'm, I'm taking um, it right now. Taking it right yeah, now. I can see eight, eight, eight to one here. What was your price? Eight, uh, eight, eight fifty. Eight fifty. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, this feels like I'm going to make a first touchdown investment on this. <laughs> I'm going to make um, right now. It's happening. I love that angle. Matt. I, I'm in. Uh, for uh, me, two hundred to win seven. Oh, sorry. Were you, you have another. Th you have something else you want to give out there, Mal? No, just um, like I said, it was just a Seattle really. Then uh, Julio Rodriguez, who was their All Star last year, won the home run derby. He's had a really quiet start. Um, he's hitting two eleven, and the Mariners will go as he goes. So when he gets it, it's not a case of if. When he gets it going, uh, the Mariners will start rolling. So there you go. No, oh, I'm in. I'm I'm invested in this one. I love that angle. We were just talking about the Kingdom, yeah, the old, the old uh, Seahawks and Mariners Stadium. Completely now, unrelated to baseball, but we were watching old football. <laughs> Raiders Seahawks back uh, when the Seahawks were the AFC West. Uh, this what is, do you get? What do you take? This Sean? is crazy, but. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head over to the AL East. Really? 
And well, because the Athletics are seven hundred and fifty to one now, if you want to <laughs> double down, <laughs> which is almost an, an impossible price. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is a little uh, little game theory here. I already have one unit on the Baltimore oh. Orioles at forty to one. What wow. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three units, oh put it on God. the Tampa Bay Rays at minus one sixty five, just in case the Rays uh, keep this heater alive. And then I'm also gonna sprinkle one unit on the Boston Red Sox here at thirty to one. What? The idea being that the Red Sox, you want to talk about, uh, I, I mean, we're looking at the relative power index, AKA RPI, Ryan, the Red Sox are fourth in the league. Uh, and, and I know, I know they're behind the, the other three teams are the Rays, O's and Yankees ahead of them. But I just still at, at a team that's four games above 500, mm. that is 30 to one to win a division. Are you watching? That will probably end up being uh, close. Do you see what happens to the city of Boston. Yeah, sports. they are. They're completely I, well. And Ryan, you, let me finish this story. Okay. They get to. They have a miraculous run. Mm. They get to the playoffs, and that's when they get swept, uh, oh, embarrassing wow. the city. The the city that was used to be considered no. uh, champions. I want rock bottom. I want all their teams <laughs> to suck so horribly they have no hope. I want their fans to all leave. Teams. So now I'm I'm making money as long as the Yankees and Blue Jays don't win the AL East. Which Flip that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe but, I'm maybe yeah. I'm jinxing it, but uh, I I don't know at thirty to one, considering how well the uh, the Red Sox have played relative to the rest of the league, I think that's a that's a good price. Yeah, the Rays are going to come back to earth, but maybe I should take some of my Yankees at three uh, plus three thirty. I'm good. I already I might have I might have bet up before the year. Moving over to the NL, uh, what what's jumping out to you, Moon off division future that looks pretty juicy right now. I think it's been the team like Mal and I have discussed over the past couple seasons. It's been the St. Louis Cardinals, um, especially in that NL Central Division. We talked about. I think the Pirates will regress a little bit uh, as we kind of progress through the season here. The Brewers have been good as well, um, but I think the Cardinals just find the second gear, especially after the All Star break, to kind of put into overdrive and start winning games. I know Mal mentioned that pitching is a concern. Um, they're not afraid to go out and trade for an arm if they need to. Last season, they did trade for Jordan Montgomery at the trade deadline that kind of, you know, help them win that division. So that number uh, currently, I think it was what plus three thirty as well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for the Cardinals to come back and win this division. Um, I, I do like them. They do have two yeah. of the better hitters with Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. They have a lot of great young talent as well. Um, so right now at plus two twenty for the Cardinals, uh, um, I, I do like them. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, what about uh, Malcolm? What about the Pirates? I, I know Moonoff said they're likely to regress, and they probably are. Uh, you know, playing they're selling. Yeah, and they are going to be selling. But also, the the counterpoint is they're plus eight fifty right now, yeah. and they're in first place. I understand there's over a hundred games left, but is there any value in a team like the Pirates, who again exceeding expectations? Maybe they're just better than uh, people thought. Is that possible, Malcolm? they got off to a good start and they've got a lot of fun players and they kind of um, embraced the new rules as well. Um, they've been, they've been running hard on the base paths of kind of, they lost um, O'Neill Cruz, who was their six foot seven um, shortstop. who's broken all of the stat cast machines uh, since he came up last year. They just can't keep up with him. He hits the ball so hard. It's unbelievable. And once he got injured, everyone kind of expected them to fall apart. They they were they had a much better win percentage than they have at the moment. I think they went on an eight game skid quite recently, and that's unfortunately I think where it's going to end up. They're still going to be fun. They they've got not much pitching. Uh, Rich Hill's still going for them, and uh, what Dick Mountain is he's about my age, man. He's got no business being stood on a uh, <laughs> on an MLB mound. But um, they've got you say Ronzi Contreras is a good young pitcher, but. Uh, it's just not. It's not going to last. It would be loads of fun, but I don't think it's mm. it's going to last. Unfortunately, there are better long shots. Oh, um, okay. Arizona are a similar price. Um, okay. Arizona have got much more potential than Pittsburgh. So what? But what? Uh, what else do you like here in the? Are you done? Real quick, down? I, I don't want to sure. gloss over what Malcolm just did because we often like to highlight when he says something funny to us Americans. Yes. But he did also just he just kind of casually shared Rich Hill's nickname, which I don't think you caught on to, which is Dick Mountain. 
<laughs> oh, I missed that. How did I not? It originated in Boston in, in 2011 Gosh. when Brock Holt thought it'd be funny to just call him Dick for Rich and Mountain for Hill. So his name became Dick, Dick Mountain. Mountain. All right, I love it. It's a great nickname. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree with Moon off that there's, there's really a lack of alternatives for a start because I don't think you can fade the Braves in the East. I don't think you can fade the Dodgers in the West. And we already have our fancy price tickets on Arizona. Yeah. So yeah. we don't need to get involved in there, which really leaves you with the cards. Um, but I think that's a great price. I'm seeing my book here is plus 270. Wow. Um, okay. Whoa. Got to make a yeah. trip over to England. Yeah. They got, the baseball um, odds are soft over there. They've closed the gap by about half since if, if we'd had this conversation last week. Um, they put a, a right old um, run together of St. Louis. So, yeah, this is the lack of alternatives. You can't back the Brewers at that price. They're not very good. I think you've got no choice. And they've got previous, like I said, we've seen them do it. Uh, they finish like a trade. So, uh, when it gets to September time, they could, we could easily see them be uh, pulling away. And we'd be delighted with our All tickets right. at this price. I got three I, I got three bets. What do you got, Craig? Cardinals, Guardians, and Mariners. Ooh, okay. But uh, it also makes me feel like I should re up on my. Uh, World Series prediction. Because now the Cardinals, uh, Cardinals now to win the National League. So if we wanted to get frisky, uh, what? Let's see, all the way down here at eighteen to one. The Guardians are now uh, I, preseason twenty-two to one to win the World Series. Now twenty-five to one. So maybe not a ton of ton of value gained. I take it back. All right, I'm I'm ram. I'm I, I'm done rambling. <laughs> No, I was just checking out what the uh, Cubs price was uh, beginning of the season. Look, it was plus six fifty. It's uh, down to plus eight hundred. I, I looking for that exact matchup: Phillies Cubs World <laughs> Series prediction again. <laughs> yeah, for some reason the books are scared to list it. I, I'm taking the cards with you guys. Made a great case, and they, especially in baseball, there are just like these franchises that the history yeah. of them being good is is good for a reason. At plus two twenty. Uh, uh, maybe the Mets are interesting at five to one, but I could just not see myself backing the Mets. And then as far as like the NL West, the no. Padres at, at seven to one, I just haven't seen enough spark. D backs are interesting at nine to one, but to Malcolm's point, like we already got down on that early. I, I don't know if there's, there's worth uh yeah. I mean, doubling up here at nine to one doesn't make a ton of sense, but yeah, I, I like the uh, I, I'm with you guys. The cards seem like a team that could really turn things on here in the second half of the season, getting back over to the uh, Cy Young award. Um, that's always a fun market. A L Cy Young. We crushed it as a team. I, I know. Like I, we, we gave out some great uh, pre-flop stuff as they say in the business, wow. but I'm looking, I'm pulling up moon offs. Um, you, yeah, I mean, feel free to, I mean, you, you can start with moon off. Okay. He, co he copied one of my picks. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry, Sean. Do you have any guys that are sitting at the top of the board as favorites? Like Moon off and I do with Zach Gallon? No, I mean, you guys both ate, gave out Zach Gallon yeah. at 11 to 1. And now, yeah, we'll start with the NL. He's at plus 190. <laughs> Uh, again, play the sharp sound effect. Well, that's early. We got it's a fucking guy. He's got to stay healthy. Yeah, we don't need to jinx it. But jinx it with off, the sword effect. Over any uh, any NL Cy Young opportunities you want to get down in? Um, let's see. I mean, when you're holding the the uh, exact gallon ticket, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. <laughs> What about uh, we Kershaw? talked about Justin Steele. I know I don't want to take your thunder away, uh, Sean. I'll let you get into that, but um. I, I, I picked up 101 on Justin Steele earlier this season. Yes, I mean, sir. nothing really. Yeah, nothing really else stood out to me for NL, man. I, I think really, I think it's going to be a two horse race between Gallon and Spencer Strider. You could see Justin Steele get into the mix as well. But yeah, ooh, let's go. Um, I feel really confident about Zach Gallon at, at uh, plus 190 right now and the holding that 12 to 1 ticket that we do have. Should we uh, get, we need to get Justin on the show, give him a pep talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Justin, you're gonna bring this home for us. Uh, Moonoff, Clayton Kershaw, or sorry, uh, Malcolm Moon, uh, Clayton Kershaw opened up at forty to one. He's down to eleven to one. Any uh, any reason to hop in there? And and what are your thoughts here on the NL Which, side? By the way, Malcolm has Strider, so like we just we yeah. have the. If you listen to the show, you have the two favorites in your pocket. Yeah, Strider is the second favorite right now, plus two twenty five. Is there anyone? Uh, Kershaw, uh, Mitch Keller, Zach Wheeler. Of course, the uh, aforementioned Justin Steele, maybe even Julio Urias at thirty to one. Any of those uh, peak or fancy? 
Uh, no, but I do have a 100 to one shot that I will give out. Oh, um, let's go. And and I'll give out, I'm, I'm going to give him out again um, because I think I put him out first time. And it's Chris Sale. Yeah. Um, old man Chris Sale. So started, was hiring him at the start of the season. Um, coming back from injury, thought he would go really well. Started a little bit ropey, um, but all of a sudden he is very stealthily uh, settled into this season really well. And what, looking at his last four starts, he's going long into games, uh, six, six and a third, six, eight innings, seven innings. Very rarely see that nowadays in giving up two runs, one run, three runs, one run. Um, his ERA over his last five starts, it's down to uh, 334. He's striking out tons of batters. Um, three or four more good starts. And this Boston team, I loved your third one before, Sean. The naysayers mm. sitting opposite you, uh, <laughs> they weren't having it. But I think they're great. I thought they were value at the start of the season, and I still think they're value again. Um, few more wins, and that Chris Sale price will absolutely diminish. So, yeah. Um, yeah, put a few uh, a few pennies on the 100 to 1 shot again. But yeah, I'm, I'm sitting with Stride at 11 to 1 as well. So. Uh, no, I'll come you don't have to try to say you don't have to say in penny. Say quid. It sounds better. Yeah, I mean, no, I was gonna quid. say. Yeah, he, I thought he didn't say quids. I was like a little disappointed with that. Yeah. Come on, dude. Come on now. Yeah, no, I mean, no, really. um, Justin Steele. You just look at his. I mean, look at the numbers. The guy is having a great season. It, it was all lining up for him. He's six and one, two point two ERA. Uh, yeah, he's just off to a great start. I mean, yeah, against my Phillies. Um, you know, they, they ended up, the Cubs ended up losing two to one, but he gave him, uh, what is it? Six innings, zero earned runs. I mean, he, he basically had one bad start where he gave up five to the Astros, but yeah. other than that, it's been a uh, pretty clean slate for him. He also spells his name the same as Lexington, Lexington steel <laughs> guys who are just uh, taking care of business. I, yeah, I don't even know. Like Kershaw maybe is interesting, but it does feel like gallon. And Strider, you, you, if you didn't get those pre-flop or even some of these long shots, um, you talking know, about you Lexington, missed- Lexington <laughs> Steel and flopping all in the same time. Be careful. Uh, yeah, so I I don't have anything to to double up on here in the side in the NL Cy Young. No, thank you. AL Cy Young, Mal. Any uh, or sorry, uh, well, yeah, we'll start with Malcolm here in the AL. You gave out Chris Sale. Any of the uh, any of the favorites interest you? Like Otani at seven to one. Uh, I've got a 20 to one shot that I like, and that is Nathan Ivaldi, um, who Ooh, is on Texas. Okay. So uh, they signed Jacob de Grom, uh, was their big fancy signing, um, injury prone, and indeed has gone down a couple of times already. Who kind of thought that their rotation might fall apart a little bit, but Ivaldi um, has held it together. He's five and two on the year with a 283 ERA, but he's improving 140 ERA over his last five. Um, He's going deep into games again, something that's important. I think you need to get that innings number up to as close to 200 as you can uh, if you want to begin with a chance of winning this. The question mark is about his durability, but again, you're scared money. You can't fade a pitcher due to health. You've just got to assume uh, that they're going to keep going. I think the fact that he's playing for Texas will keep him relevant as well because we've just been talking about how good Texas yeah. are and how they, their profile will um, stay high throughout the season. And he's had stints as a top quality starter in the past. He's a World Series winner. We've seen it. He's, he's demonstrated this before. Um, and he's on that path again. 20 to 1 is a really good price. He's starting to uh, to gain a lot of attention at the moment, Eovaldi. He's starting to turn a few heads. So, yeah, I like that 20 to 1. Fun fact uh, not, to, not to jump all over the place, but Justin Steele was drafted in the 2014 MLB draft. Number one pick overall that year, Brady Aiken, didn't sign with the Houston Astros. Hmm. They could be even better. Yeah, no, really... he, I'm kidding. He completely washed out. He he got drafted <laughs> in the first round again the following year by Cleveland. Still sucks. Uh, Mo- uh, Moonoff, what do you got for AL Cy Young? Anything you want to add? I think. Uh, let's see. Looking at the pre-flop stuff, um, you were on. You have Otani. You had Otani and at twelve oh, and Valdez. Yeah, M- Sh- yeah. Moonoff and I also on uh, Otani together. <laughs> um, so the two guys that I was looking at, and I mean. They might take away votes from each other, but the twins pitchers, Joe Ryan and Sonny Gray. Mm. Uh, yeah, Sonny Gray a, was kind of on my list. Oh, yeah, no, that guy yeah. will fail you. He will fail you eventually. <laughs> yeah, he's. I think I like Joe Ryan a little bit more than Sonny Gray right now. But um, Joe Ryan six and one on the season with a two point two five ERA, sixty six strikeouts, only eight uh, walks that he's given up. 
Um, and he's really been consistent for this team. He's gone at least six innings in every single one of his starts thus far this season. And when we talk about AL or sorry, any Cy Young, um, you know, kind of your resume, you look at strikeouts, you look at innings pitched, and obviously you look at the record in the ERA and all four of those boxes, all five of those boxes are checked right now for Joe Ryan. I know we probably missed a number at 45 to one uh, pre-flop, but right now at 12 to one, I think there is some value here for him. Uh, Sonny Gray, he has four and zero this season with a 1.64 ERA, but like, like, like Kramer mentioned, there may come to a point where he does kind of fall off the mountain and, and kind of regresses back or regresses in a negative way. So, but Joe Ryan for me at 12, the one I really do like uh, him uh, for a future portfolio right now. I mean, the mean can be either direction. It depends on your perspective, Muno. Wow. So you can regress both ways. <laughs> oh it, it, at SGPN, we allow regression. Both Positive ways. regression. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? I'll be honest. Uh, Mal made a really good case for Evaldi. At, we're seeing twenty-two to one over wow. here. So I'll just take the lazy man's way out and copy that one. Kramer, what do you like here in the uh, in the Cy Young? Oh, I'm I'm sitting with my bullets. I got Otani. Yeah. Pre pre flop, as you like to say. Yep. And I got Gallon pre flop. So what do I got to do? Why would I change my position? <laughs> there you go. Otani at seven to one gallon at plus one nine. Right about so few things with baseball. I'm going <laughs> to I'll throw uh, one more out there. I sure. think Mal might agree with me on this a uh, hundred to one for Bryce Miller. Uh, we just talked about him on the pod today. He's off to a great start for the Mariners so far this season. He's had four starts. He's gone at least six innings in all four of those starts. Uh, he has a two and one record with a 1.42 ERA 22 strikeouts and only two walks so far this season. So at 101, if he's going to continue to uh, pitch the way he has been, if we do like, mm-hmm. and I know you guys like the Mariners to, you know, come back in this AL West division, if they get into a playoff spot, I think Bryce Miller is going to be a big part of the reason why. And again, if he continues the way that he is, that 101 is going to be some great value for him. Oh, I'm in on this one. <laughs> All right. Another <laughs> hundred to one. Okay. Why not? Well, I, I just like, Again, the, I like, I like just leaning into this Mariners angle, right? It's like we're, we're doing correlation, Sean. We're, we, we're stacking right here. We're putting two things together that really, uh, you know, they both probably happen together more than they don't. <laughs> Obviously, hundred to one. Sure, uh, sure. Fire. Any other, uh, Mal? Any other futures? Interesting uh, bets you want to toss out here uh, before we let you guys go? Um, just the World Series uh, bet, really. Oh I mean, yeah. Um, we're far enough into the season now that we've got a good handle on everyone, and I think the Braves at uh, eleven to two plus five fifty. Um, is is a good price. Like I say, I've got the I've got the Rays in my satchel already, so happy with that. Uh, but the Braves are going along really, really well. And it's just looking at some of the the wobbly opposition. The Dodgers um, are missing a little bit of pitching. Um, so Atlanta, I mean, Ronald Acuna is doing ab- absolutely incredible things. He's got the seventh best OPS um, at this stage of an MLB season since 1900. I mean. That's 120 odd years of history. And he's seventh on that list. Like, um, he's absolutely flying. Um, I still like the Angels to make the playoffs. It's plus 230. It's not going to change your life. Um, <laughs> and it's again, it's Seattle um, uh, plus 230 to, to make the playoffs as well. If you wanted to take a little bit of insurance, uh, Ryan, on some of those. Uh, bigger ones that we that we mentioned earlier on, but yeah, I'd, throw, I'd be throwing. How the dare you imply that at me, <laughs> Ryan? Strike you as an insurance gambler. The fuck is that, Malcolm? <laughs> no, sorry, it's personally I, I can only apologize. <laughs> hey, wa- watch me walk with the sixty-seven dollars in chips in my pocket right to the roulette table because I'm not making the trip to the cashier for that. Ryan, bullshit. Ryan tries <laughs> to double down on a blackjack. They're like, he's like, can I double down? They're like, uh, I guess. It's my yeah. favorite bit. It's my favorite blackjack <laughs> table bit. That really freaks him out. Uh, Moon off. Any other <laughs> any other futures uh, baseball bets you want to toss out here uh, before we let you guys go? Uh, no, I, I I did pick the Braves uh, to come out of the National League, so feeling good about that. They're off to a great start. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you want to get down on the Rays, I think they've convinced me. Uh, their pitching has been really good. Their batting has been really good. Um, but no, man. I think I think we've I think we did really well pre five before the season started. 
Yes, this was this was not an excuse to tout. It was an earnest no. uh, earnest opportunity to find some good value for the listeners out there. Of course, tons of value when you subscribe to the MLB Gambling Podcast. Check out Moon Off Mal, the whole rest of the uh, team there, while they uh, give you daily picks podcasts. Again, a great tool. Uh, if you're looking to bet baseball tomorrow, mm. and this applies literally to every day almost, yeah. uh, tune in, tune in uh, to the MLB Gambling Podcast. Get you guys set up a lot of fun over there, and make sure you follow Mal on Twitter at Mal underscore B underscore Sport and Moon Off the Machine over on Twitter at Sports Nerd Eight Two Four. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you calling in. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Hey, uh, we got some college baseball on the way before we get to that shout out to shady rays. That's right. I'm rocking my shady rays right now in studio. Again, if you're playing baseball, if you're going out to a baseball game, like there's nothing worse. I, it still blows my mind where I see outfielder outfielders in the major leagues, uh, you know, trying to track down a pop fly without wearing sunglasses. It truly blows my mind. Again, whatever outdoor activity you're, you're doing, Shady Rays is the way to go. And we got that great contest ending at the month of May, AKA Shady May, AKA Shady Rays. Get your pays. Doesn't really quite work, but you get the idea. Go ahead, again. Get your shady rays. Use the promo code SGPN. Get fifty percent off, and then go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash shady. Enter in for your chance to win five hundred dollars. Know we got a bunch of international listeners, and of course, you guys get a chance at getting those sweet, sweet shady rays as well. So again, shadyrays.com. Use the code SGPN. Look at these sweet ass shades. Uh, two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Then take your seat over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash shady for your chance to win the five hundred. Dollar Shady May contest. Boy, Sean, it's bright in here. It is it's bright. It is Ryan. It is bright. And uh, joining us, this man has a bright future when it comes to handicapping college baseball. You know him from the college of baseball experience on SGPN, Mr. Noah Bienick. Noah, what's happening, man? How's it going, Ryan and uh, Sean? Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, first time on SGP talking college baseball. It's a pleasure. Yeah, no. Uh, Noah has a uh, real passion for college baseball. AKA, he knows something about college baseball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> makes him uh, makes him a massive expert in my mind. Uh, no, you actually, you actually. I, I don't know if ever, everyone knows this. You actually pitched and played college baseball. Give us a little recap for your career that people may not be aware. Yeah, so basically fucked by COVID. Uh, that's the recap <laughs> oh, no. because I was I was three years <laughs> NAI ball, um, and basically never actually exposed a year of athletic eligibility to say the least few, few games up on varsity, but that season ended and on the bubble for most of my life. So that's how it goes. And Hey, when I, I get to uh, cover and talk about college baseball, that's all I need, babe. So yeah, we, we need like a college athlete pantheon. Like where, <laughs> where does this fit in the, yes, you Patty C all we're the, putting together. Well, I mean, Patty C was a pretty high level athlete. <laughs> yes. now. I mean, I, let's, let's don't, don't let his the, uh, current current uh, regimen fool you. Some of us were D one athletes. Yes. Some, <laughs> some were. Some were D one athletes. Yeah, I, I I believe drinking is a sport. Uh, mm. So yeah, I would consider myself a athlete. No, I'll be honest. Uh, college baseball really got a uh, really got a lot of attention. <laughs> Shot in the arm. Got, got a lot of heat when the uh, the coach of Alabama, aka Brad Bohannon, who, as Moonoff pointed out, does kind of look like Colby, uh, the Alabama baseball coach, who they immediately terminated because apparently he called his buddy and there's video of his buddy picking up the phone and placing a bet a against Alabama this because he was switching. His this is the same. <laughs> Same school that let the uh, I mean the basketball team slightly different different uh, regard than the baseball team I guess sure sure yeah the, I, <laughs> slightly again, different situation again, Brandon Miller is lucky wrong he place, wasn't wrong time. he wasn't wagering <laughs> on whether or not there would be a, a homicide of <laughs> Brad Bohannon certainly in the wrong place wrong time he has been let go give us a uh, quick recap of that scandal I know you wrote about it on uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com but what what exactly <laughs> happened. Yeah. So, I mean, their projected starting pitcher, Luke Holman, who's been going in the first game of the series, pretty much for them, the whole second half of the season, he was scratched an hour prior to the start with an injury. 
Um, and basically, like you mentioned, Bohannon got on the phone with one of his buddies in Cincinnati. <laughs> um, and th- that guy placed a bet at the MGM Sportsbook yeah. connected to the Great American Ballpark. Um, and that's becoming a thing nowadays in the MLB. They're putting sports books literally in the ballpark. But any- anyways, that guy, it's reported that he went in and put a six-figure bet on LSU <laughs> to beat Alabama. <laughs> And this is a mark like college baseball. It's growing, but it's still a really niche betting yeah. market. Red and flag. A six Red bet, flag. A, a six figure bet sticks out like a sore thumb. But then correct me if I'm wrong. Alabama still ended up winning the game, right? No, Al- Alabama. Oh, actually, it was, it was kind of like it. The way it went out was obviously LSU had a hot start against the bullpen pitcher that was notified on short notice that he'd be starting the game. LSU, I believe jumped out to like a seven to one lead in this game. And then Alabama crawled all the way back, made it, I think it was seven to seven to six. LSU went on to win eight to six. So originally it looked sweating. like somebody <laughs> bet a lot of money on the number one team in the country at the time with the best pitcher in the country in Paul Skeens. But Hey, I mean, there was a little bit more to it than we did, all thought. Now, but, do we know? Do we know? I'm assuming they didn't honor his bet, or what? What do you know of the guy's bet outcome? Has there been any news on I that? Haven't, haven't learned. I really, I really because I, that, I don't. That, I obviously what the the what the coach did was illegal, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and if, we don't know if like he was in cahoots either. We don't know if it was really like he got a kickback for it either. Yeah. I would assume maybe there was some other sort of agreement, but the guy who actually placed the bet, did he do anything illegal? It's not illegal to can, know can I, information, right? Just as a guy who we've been around gambling a long time, Sean, Yeah. does it strike you odd that they were taking six figure bets on college baseball? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part of the story that stands <laughs> out is like, what, what was going on here? Because I don't know if you told me Noah or I read it somewhere, but like the entire handle on the game up until that point was like 30 K. Yeah. And so no, I get, I like no, it was $35 from oh. one book, $35. <laughs> uh, yeah, that so was reported by David Purdom during the game. So <laughs> that day that all of this came out, that they fired their coach, Alabama plays a game against the number four team in the country, Vanderbilt, Alabama goes out to, they win that game. But during the game, they were talking about it on the broadcast the whole night. And David Purdom, the guy that reported on this for ESPN came on and said that one book didn't even take a single dollar on that game. And another yeah, one only took baseball. 35. That's crazy. But, yeah. I mean, Alabama has kind of turned this whole thing. Like they have a, they have a new interim head coach and in Jason Jackson and their recent success has been one of the best stories in baseball. They've won. Uh, they've rattled off a ton of wins. They've won eight of the last 10 and it's really behind a stud uh, top three pitching staff in the sec right now, Bama has a trio of starting pitchers with ERAs below four and in college baseball, ERAs under five is good. Under four is great. Under three. It's an elite pitcher. Alabama right now is without two of their best starters from the preseason, Grayson hit and Ben Hess due to injury. But uh, we're looking at the starting trio of Jacob McNary, who's six and one record three thirty nine ERA. Luke Holman, who is the guy that was scratched for that game one, he's seven and three on the year with a 353 ERA, holding opponents to just 173 uh, on the batting average this season. And then Garrick McMillan with a 390 ERA. So that's solid rotation, and their offense has been rolling right now. Uh, Crimson Tide looks to have that second gear here for the postseason. If I'm Brad Bohan and I'm taking the severance package and I'm just letting it ride on my team, <laughs> I, you know, I'm like, you know oh, what? that's great. Make yeah. a reality show. Just put a <laughs> massive bet on every game. He really does look like Colby. He does. He does look. Could like this Colby. be the character that's calling us with the list? <laughs> <laughs> he is Lisp Dundee. Ryan, maybe you can. Do uh, a list? Maybe you can. Maybe you can pull up the photo for the the people watching on YouTube because it is it is pretty amazing. Noah. The SEC baseball tournament is going on this week. I know there's a bunch of, uh, of of conference tournaments going on now. I know with college basketball, sometimes we debate like, "Hey, is it good to win your conference tournament?" Obviously, you get the automatic bid, but maybe in some cases you shoot your wad and it doesn't. Uh, because in the same way with college baseball, they have the conference tournaments and then they have the World Series of college baseball. It's a single elimination style bracket, correct? Uh, or is it? Or what is elimination. the World Series? Double, so it's it's so the College weird, World dude. Series is two pools of four teams, double elimination style, until you get 
the winners of both pools and then it's a best of three series there okay it's it's a it's very because not only that but it goes it is like very confusing double for, elimination uh, the sport. and then you go like best of three series and then you go back yeah. to double elimination for the college <laughs> world series yep. and then you i think you finish with the best of three series potentially yeah right. so it, it's uh, i mean as someone who likes a nice complex way to fairly determine a champion <laughs> I mean, Sean, we did we not used to have World Cup style beer beer pong tournaments? Yeah, oh, there was yes. group there was group play, and then there was knockout rounds. All you, right, you think? Yes, Ryan really <laughs> ran it like the World Cup. We would have uh, we would have four or five different groups, four teams in a group. I still have my buddy still might have that duct tape trophy we uh, were able to put together. That thing hey, was pretty I'll awesome. Admit, I was designing all the bracketologies for the college basketball experience. I've done it a couple times for baseball show as well. I'm a bracket nerd. I love some of that, but Kramer, let me raise you this, what the sec baseball tournament is because it's just absolutely insane. I hate the way that the tournament bracket is designed Four teams get a buy. So it's the, the top four seeds, Florida, Arkansas, LSU, and Vanderbilt. Then the teams seated five through 12 are in a play-in game. The winners of that game, uh, that play-in game advanced to what is called the double elimination stage. Jesus. So Basically, this stage lasts until the semifinals. So then there's four teams remaining, two teams without a loss, two teams with one loss. That's and if that team with one loss knocks out, if the team with one loss beats the team without a loss, oh, the Jesus. team without a loss goes home with just one loss. It's and like the other team from the losers bracket. I thought goes to the, I thought the uh, NBA playing tournament was uh, was was a yeah, lot. It's this like a dog right. show with humans. All right. I got uh, I got okay. Col <laughs> got Colby up on the screen next to Noah right well, now. Uh, and and Brad Bohannon joining us on the show. Brad, <laughs> thanks for hopping on uh, last minute here. Just want to get your thoughts. On the uh, on the scandal, how are you handling uh, being fired from Alabama? I'm just sipping that beautiful whiskey you guys gave me for Christmas. <laughs> okay, well that's you know that's that's an interesting way to handle that, and I'm glad glad you got our, our Christmas gift there. What about uh, the, are are you watching any other sports? Do you have any sort of other takes <laughs> outside of college baseball? I think Blake Bortles is better than Dak Prescott. <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting take, Brad, and um, yeah, we'll we'll see. I guess I, I'm always. <laughs> I agree with you on that. 565. What what was your what was your winning percentage as a coach? Can you can you clarify no. that? 565. Oh, come on, oh, that's Sean. pretty good. How many thousands of dollars did you get down on the Alabama game that 565. day? 565. Wow, that is impressive, <laughs> coach. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us, Brad. Do uh, I still have a list? Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. The, the, Brad, the teeth with the little bit of gap makes me believe the list. <laughs> that, it's unbelievable how that works. Stray it's hand. Like a mini, is good. mini stray hand. So right. getting back to the the big picture here, is it good to do well in the conference tournament when we're we're trying to identify some teams early on here who might be uh, able to win the college baseball world series. And of course, no, is going to be breaking it down. Be going to giving you a ton of college baseball picks podcasts on the college baseball experience. But as we're trying to identify some, uh, some long shots or maybe just teams that are going to go on a run here for the college baseball series, is it good to do well in the conference tournament or can it hurt you again? Can you kind of shoot your wad like you do in college basketball? Yeah, I mean, over the past five years, 29 SEC teams that played in the NCAA tournament played three or less games in the SEC baseball tournament. 66%, aka 19 of them, made a super regional, which is the second round of the NCAA tournament. That's the best of three stage uh, for Kramer. Um, and <laughs> then the 48% uh, of the teams that played three or less games, uh, which was 14 of the 29, they went to Omaha, which is the final eight. And then 10%, three of them won the College World Series. 17 teams of those NCAA tournament teams that played in the SEC baseball tournament, four or more games in Hoover, only 59% of them, so that's 10, made a super regional, 18%. Just 18% went to Omaha. Okay. That's only three teams. And then one team won the College World Series, uh, so that's 6%. So the SEC is by far the college baseball's most competitive conference. And this year's field of teams might actually be better and more competitive than the eight teams that we might see in the college world series this year. It's mm. that crazy. Um, of course, these coaches and kids want to win a ring, bring a trophy home for the, for their schools. But recent trends do show that it's actually, it might be better to, t to attack it NBA style, Whoa. manage their load, load and take the week in Hoover, uh. not put their whole pitching staff through a ton of stress and they get some time off. So 
if you're playing some college world series futures that's not a bad trend to look at oh interesting sure. all right i mean that, that just don't try to although the sec might think the sec, SEC championship is S- more important well, it just means more it means championship more. <laughs> it means uh, more I I would say all right. So I I think I I think I got it, Sean. We have we start with we we have sixty four teams. They play in a double in eight double elimination tournaments. I think, and we get cool. down to si- sixteen teams who mm-hmm. play in eight super regionals, best of three, and then that breaks it gets us down to eight where we go to. For why why do we play the College World Series? Uh, where we play the College World Series in Nebraska, in Omaha. Yeah. Well, the idea of it was it's a centralized location in America. Yeah. Easy enough. Interesting. Planes usually fly over there, though. <laughs> I, I wonder, do they have a runway for Warren some, Buffett's land? there? He's a big college baseball guy. Uh, great, great stakes, Omaha State. Saving, saving the money going to McDonald's to get his coffee. <laughs> All right. LSU. LSU was, of course, in that betting scandal. They're kind of a beast overall as a team. I'm looking at their World Series odds. They are plus 450, co favorite with Wake Forest. What's your take on uh, LSU as a team and and them being such a big favorite here, Noah? So LSU has one of the best offenses in the country, but the main issue that I see with LSU is they lack pitching depth. Uh, Paul Skeens, he's a superstar ace and could be the number one pick in the MLB draft if it wasn't for his center field teammate, Dylan Cruz. Ty Floyd has been a fine second starter behind Skeens. Floyd is 7 0 with a 459 ERA. But LSU doesn't have a reliable reliever to come in after those two starters. And they don't even really have a good third guy that they feel comfortable giving the ball to to start a third game of the weekend. The Tigers' opponents just need to survive six to seven innings against those two starting pitchers, then get into the bullpen and do some work. In college baseball's postseason, like we've been talking about, the format's a little bit weird, and you could play up to five games in a three-day span. Pitching depth is crucial for some teams in order to make it uh, make a run to Omaha. LSU does not have that ever since they've lost Chase Shores and Garrett Edwards due to injuries. Those were two of their more reliable relievers. For the last month, LSU's been kind of like a leaky pipe. It starts leaking. They duct tape the initial part. Then there's a new leak. <laughs> right now, that pipe Sounds has about four pieces <laughs> of buck- duct tape, and it's ready to burst. In my bracket... I'm not going to have LSU advancing too far. That's the reason. It why. sounds like uh, a guy who's recently dealt with a a leaky pipe. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, who hasn't had a leaky pipe? Oh, yeah. Right? Come on. Same I mean, for the sort of vitality. Don't, don't get me started. I come home and there's water all over the backyard. <laughs> oh no. LSU plus four fifty currently in the futures market yeah. to win the the college world series. So, re- real quick, something I noticed as I'm looking through these odds. Now, maybe I'm jumping ahead here, but is Alabama not eligible or are books just not I allowing was trying you to, to find Alabama? just haven't listed them. They, they <laughs> have not listed them since the beginning. What's of that? that mean? Are <laughs> the books guilty too? Oh, uh, they don't just know. don't, just they know moves. the whole, they know the whole thing's crooked. Well, let's, let's think for a second. They, it's I mean, very, Alabama is one of the hottest teams in the country. Like I yeah. mentioned, they've won eight of the last 10. They offered sec tournament betting odds without Alabama. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's They're a team scared. that was definitely dangerous, dangerous enough to win it. They're I, scared. I looked at it and I'm like, so the house has a team in this too. I was, I was uh, out. <laughs> we we might want to look at maybe there's some money cleaning going on because the, the large bet is is are still a red flag to me. Yeah, like you you they're they're not letting you get down on NFL Week One action for six figures right now. It's yeah, that should have. I, I, I and that's re- what triggered the thing. Someone maybe they, scratching maybe, someone's back. Maybe they accepted the bet, knowing that they were going to get some oh, information out of it. And how much do you want to put on it, sir? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Let me just hit this button underneath my desk and process uh, this for you. Like what about? Well, yeah. What about Wake Forest, the other favorite? They're forty-five and nine. They got uh, leading the country in ERA two point seven two, which, as you said, anything sub three is awesome for college baseball. I would assume they're going to be a number one seed. They're also, I'm seeing plus four fifty four the college baseball future. How say you in the uh, Demon Deeks here, Noah? Yeah, Wake Forest. They've just gone berserk this season. In years past, their calling card has been that explosive offense that plays in a little ballpark that hits a lot of home runs. That's still the case this year, as their three and four hitters, Nick Kurtz, uh, Nick Kurtz and Brock Wilkin are the twin towers. Basically Wilkin broke the school record for home runs in a season and career this year. And this offense features one of my favorite player names in the game. The Deeks leadoff hitter looks very tiny compared to their three, four hitter. Um, and his name is Tommy Hawk, which kind of sounds like Tommy Hawk. And I like <laughs> what the parents did there. Um, Wake Forest 
they've been known for that good offense, but this year their pitching is absolutely insane. Rhett Louder is their ace, and he just won ACC Pitcher of the Year for the second year in a row. Um, he's 12 and 0 on the season with a 160 ERA, 108 Damn. strikeouts, 17 walks, and 95.2 innings pitched. Josh Hartle is their second starter. He's nine and one with a 201 ERA. 106 strikeouts, 15 walks, and 76 innings. And then the Deeks' third starter is Seth Keener. He's six and one with a 202 ERA, 68 strikeouts, 16 walks. Their fourth best arm is Sean Sullivan. He's five and one with a 256 ERA, 19, 91 strikeouts, 16 walks, and 56.1 innings. Those four pitchers are some of the best pitchers in all of college baseball. Um, and in general, their top nine most used pitchers have ERAs under 410. It's a super good, super deep staff. And it's because these private school nerds have put so much money into their <laughs> facilities and pitching research, their analytics, everything. Uh, Wake Forest is an absolute baseball factory right now. Yeah. Currently the favorite to win it all. And, and, um, and I grabbed him at 30 to one in the preseason. Just shout wow. out. Oh, oh, oh man. You are in the, you are in the sharp sound Ooh. effect for that Ooh. CLV. But I I've heard little birdie told me that. Oh. Being the number one Birdie. seed in college baseball is a curse. How say you know? Yeah. So since 1999, no number one overall seed has won the NCAA tournament. So it's kind of like this team is really overperformed and almost flying too close to the sun. Uh, <laughs> you know the the Icarus uh, Greek mythology there. Um, but it's so serious. College baseball fan bases down in the South and the SEC they actively root for their teams to lose games late in the season. If they have any somewhat of a chance to be the number one overall seed, that's uh, crazy. Just the, the trend that, I mean, no number one overall seed hasn't won the college world series since 1999 is taken that serious in the space. So wake forest being a, a, a private school, a little bit smaller fan bases than a lot of these uh, Southeastern conferences or ACC blue bloods. Um, maybe their fan base doesn't really care about it too much. And it's not out there much this year, but that's still a big thing that a lot of people believe in. I'm hoping that's not the case this year though. <laughs> Do you know, uh, did you say who that team was in 99 Miami, Miami? Yeah. Another private school. The U We're, worth noting, throw them up, throw up your, you throw that's, up the, you. that's fucking disgusting. You down, down. <laughs> you down, big. down. Noah, we have of course invented, and again, some have the, tried to discredit us. But first ever sports media company to reveal the uh, the infamous system known as the first half unders yes. in March Madness, aka college basketball, aka the greatest tourney of all time. Is there is there an equivalent in the college baseball world? A, a great trend that you're always going to get down on, or something we can auto play just for some action. Yeah. So last year I called it the buffet because I was betting on every over on day one of the Ooh. NCAA tournament two years ago. So I, I, I have to remind you, I was 19 at the time, my degenerate brain, I'm playing NAIA baseball. Riding the bench. <laughs> I noticed that some of these baseballs were flying out of the park at an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic rate during that season. I have some buddies on central Michigan. They're all my age. So they had only hit six home runs all season prior to the NCAA tournament. They hit nine in the four NCAA tournament games that they played. I'm telling you guys that the NCAA juices baseballs Love in order it. to try to bring in more casual baseball viewers I'm because in. the normal view, normal person loves the home run. There's a reason why our game in college baseball has grown in popularity so much over the last five years in general. I think that the regular season baseballs might be flying a little bit more this year in general, uh, then in past, um, they introduced BB core bats in 2011. <laughs> oh, and this. those basically dead analysis, uh, the aluminum for all the players, uh, all the hitters in the game and offense was at an all time low for the last 10 years. And all of a sudden the last three years, we've seen power numbers and batting averages slightly climb up, uh, higher and higher. And this year it's at an all time rate. Uh, the thought behind the buffet is that on the first day of the NCAA tournament, 90% of the teams are throwing their aces and the totals are set just a little bit lower by the books. Oh, My yes. assumption is that they don't really take into account just how different the quality of hitting is from the sec, the ACC to some of the mid majors out there. 
So the mid eight, the mid major aces do not fare nearly as well in the NCAA tournament compared to during their conference season. Add in a baseball with a little extra flight. These games finish as lacrosse scores. The buffet last year went 21 and nine, oh which was God. the first year of me hosting oh the college baseball God. experience and tallying up the stats from the overs. So Kramer, this is, this is an amazing no, opportunity. Me and my clients are all in. We're going to have a serious in. question. Everybody eats. So uh, the, 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 the obvious fingers, uh, the obvious case of how this can play the X files music. But the reason this obviously isn't true is that the NCAA has been generally bad at everything, <laughs> but what if this gambling things was a hoax? Like if it was, if you were going to make up a story and you didn't know enough about gambling and yeah, there has to be a Patsy. So maybe this Alabama coach was doing, but maybe yeah. something else was wrong because look, they're eight and two with the new coach. Yeah. So maybe there's something else going maybe they on. Kill two birds with one May stone maybe. set up, create a ton of attention, but you fucked sport. up. You, you, you didn't realize that a hundred, like a six figure bet was too big. It was just <laughs> too big, but I, I mean, it, it drew attention to the game. We no one and I have been talking like yeah. the, the existence of lines on these games, and the fact that all the games will be on ESPN Plus or whatever. Uh, it, God's eye is going to be watching them. We're uh, we're obviously at least going to be early uh, first games. Well, we're going to be on all the overs. Oh my, one hundred percent. And and there's no reason. There's nothing going on in sports right now. Really, uh, the finals are kind of wrapping exactly. up. Exactly. So college it's a good baseball time. can absolutely corner the summer with another another delightful bracket. Everyone loves a bracket. Everyone Even loves a bracket. Men, women, they, them, he, him, <laughs> Zer, Zer. The Zers love college baseball betting systems. Noah, before last year in in Omaha, uh, I think it was the first ten games. The over was nine and one, just oh, an insane trend. Oh and we saw some of them just start opening at fourteen to fifteen. I mean, so in the MLB, most totals are at eight or nine. Yeah. In college baseball, your normal total is set at like. 13. It's either 12 and a half or 13 and a half most times. Uh, we're, I'm we're just, doing I'm, this. I'm You're seriously notes, typing. Put over something here. in the get something on the calendar. <laughs> Noah, rem remember to remind us about this. Yeah, no, right, Noah's going to be all over this graphics videos. Yeah. Of course, make sure you subscribe to the college baseball experience, and we got a uh, we yeah, got real the college baseball oh. picks page up on the website. You can easily get that in the SGPN app. Download the SGPN app if you have not already. But yeah, before we under the MLB tab, by the way. I got yes. DM'd about that today. Uh, and real quick, what what uh what mused me getting what uh, getting no on the show here was me I fire up the podcast app this morning uh at a dangerously early hour. I'm out with the dogs and I see <laughs> there's a new episode of the college baseball experience. So I fire it up and Sean, if you had to guess what time Noah live stream as well on YouTube, which by on the college experience, you what time was Noah re recording slash live streaming the show last night? I, I I'm guessing he's got some Scott Reichel in there. So I'm saying one 30 AM 5 AM East coast. I assume. No, what are you doing? Are you addicted to red bull? So What's hey, going on? You're a young man. Explain this to the people. Hey, I did order a couple of vodka oh, red Jack, bulls out in pleasure? Vegas, but <laughs> I, Sorry, no. Keep keep going. What were you up? I gotta <laughs> say, the goal of it with the daily pods is to get that thing out there for the college baseball fan that's making their commute to work that wants to get, put a little bit money on these, some of these games. And the the odds don't really come out until like eleven at night, midnight. There's still an SEC baseball game. It's in the eighth inning at twelve forty seven a.m. The odds on that game is not going to drop until like two a.m. for tomorrow. So I'm up handicapping them until about 3 a.m. Uh, I have a couple of notes ready and yeah, I mean, most of the time I'm, I'm live on YouTube doing it at like four or five in the morning. That was what I was, was uh, that's what it was last year. I did it uh, daily pods throughout the postseason for the conference tournaments and the NCAA tournament and have the sickos started to show up to the <laughs> chat. <laughs> They have. There was about <laughs> seven of them yesterday oh. at about five fifty a.m. <laughs> oh, this is excellent. Oh, this I, is great. I can't hear hear. I can't wait to for all the, the of Colby's uh, disciples to start showing up to the baseball chat. <laughs> I'm excited. The Church of Colby. All right. Before we let you go again, tune in for the daily picks. But give us a uh, give us a couple futures here for the College Baseball World Series that we should get in now because maybe the odds are going to change or you think it's a good price. Obviously, we'll be subscribed, rating, reviewing, yeah. locked in for the college baseball uh, experience. But what are we doing here for some futures? Any any long shots? Any middle of the road stuff? We should get in now. So 
I, I will be honest. I don't usually love betting on championship futures without being able to see like the bracket or the path in front of the teams in front of me. Um, if you're looking the back, one of the favorites, I like uh, both Florida and Arkansas's chances to win the whole damn thing this year. They're both around 10 to one yep. for a long shot. Uh, Dallas Baptist, you can find them anywhere <laughs> from 50 to 75 oh, to one. Yes. They have an outside <laughs> shot of hosting, but they have a really good, top three starters and their offense is electric. Um, the pick that I'll go in depth for the podcast here. Um, I think there's some great, great value on Patty sees Wahoos, anything at 20 to one or above. Ooh. I see some 24s out there in the wild. Yeah. I'm seeing there's 25. Some really right good, there's some really good value there because Virginia has a shot to be a top eight national seed, which means that in the first two rounds, so the, the pool play double elimination and then the best of three series, which is they the super it. regional, Virginia could host both of those. They have a 32 and four record at home this season. The who's are another team with insanely good mm. pitching depth. 11 of 11 of Virginia's 12 most used pitchers have an ERA below 430. They have the sixth best team ERA in the country with a 391 12th in strikeouts with 554 on the season, 13th in whip uh, in the country at 391, but uh, at 132, sorry, the offense flat out rakes as well with the best batting average in the country at 334 seven of their nine hitters have an OPS above 930 and on offense the duo of Jake Geloff and Kyle Teal is unavoidable at a really uh, a really big reason why I like UVA's chances to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament this year is because they can do everything really 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 well and they have a chance to host all the way up until Omaha or my Hokies gonna make it no, sorry. Oh. <laughs> They're 200 to and, one. And honestly, that's a nice fade. Uh, we, I had it, uh, that kind of lined up here in the ACC tournament. There's a weird, uh, scheduling quirk where the teams that lose their first game, if they play a team that hasn't lost yet, uh, basically it's pool play. So teams that are one and one, uh, it's three pools or four pools of three teams. Sorry. And if every pool in the three team, uh, if every team in three team, oh, I can't talk. If every team in the three team pool goes one and one, then the highest seed advances to the semifinals. Oh, wow. However, uh, if the highest seed loses or another team loses there, they're zero and one. If the middle seed or lower seed is 0 and 1, they have no shot at advancing to the semifinals. Um, and usually they just punt it. So, Virginia Tech being the 12 seed in this tournament, they're playing Virginia tomorrow. I love that spot. So, uh, that's another spot to look at for the ACC. The last year, the uh, this trend went 3 and 0, and they covered the run line in every game. Mm. Love it, Ryan. Love, uh, love get, getting some long shots. Love a a lead pipe system. I found a, a, a some a, a, a projected bracket for the college baseball Ooh. World Series, and I was noticing that probably the reason that that Dallas Baptist still has those long odds, even though they are projected to be one of the sixteen host sites, is because uh, they're they're going to be the sixteenth, and they would have to they would have <laughs> to take on Wake Forest in the super regional. Yeah, yeah I, I would say Dallas Baptist kind of has an outside shot at hosting. I just like they could. So based on how the regional system goes, they're going to be kept either in the state of Texas, or they could get sent to LSU, or they could get sent west. Out west, those teams actually this year, that region in general has been kind of down. I don't really like Stanford a ton. LSU is a team that I'm targeting. I want to fade them in the postseason. And Texas, they've been hot lately, but I don't trust their offense. So I like Dallas Baptist in any of those regions that they could get placed here. Let's go. Love it, Noah. Great work. Thanks for calling in. Subscribe to the uh, College Baseball Experience. Give Noah Thanks a follow. For me, guys. Yeah, of course. Give Noah a follow on Twitter at 70, the number 7NB, 77NB. I mean, I'm Jack for college baseball. I'm ready to go. I'd say I'm three quarters, Chubb. I, once we get to the first. The Unsheath your sword for college baseball. <laughs> Once we're there and the overs are hitting. Oh, it's gonna be it's well, gonna be a glorious actually, day for can God's we, Can we not call them overs? We're gonna just we're gonna go the opposite of the under. Huh? 
Okay. Uh, oppo under. We're it's going. Un, it's a bizarro <laughs> under trend where, where we actually take the over. Uh, smash the subscribe button. YouTube.com slash sports gaming podcast live Sunday, and Thursday, 8 30 Pacific, 11 30 East. Thank you for participating in the sports gaming podcast. For sports gaming podcast, I'm Sean Stack of the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Hut, hut, hike. Kramer, let it ride. Dong. <laughs>